going to talk about runner beans. Um, they're very good for you. I used to eat them quite a lot as a child because my mum used to grow a lot of them in the garden. I like them especially because they don't take up much space in the soil. Because you plant them in the soil, they go upwards. So you've got a little bit of soil area, but quite a lot of produce because they grow upwards. Um, they're grow them in pots on balconies, they're quite successful doing that. They prefer it in the ground because they like a lot of root space, but they do like a lot of water runner beans and they like a lot of moisture retentive um, soil. So if you've got fairly dry soil, you can dig a pit before you sow the runner bean seeds and put lots of moisture stuff in like, um, we've got a bokachi bin with lots of rotting vegetables and stuff and we bury that in the ground and after a while that decomposes under the ground quite deep so um, we have a couple of binfuls of that in a runner bean area before but you can use newspaper soaked up, um, cardboard, um, things like toilet bowls, egg boxes, anything that's been soaked in water bury that in the ground that can help keep the deeper soil moisture retentive um, the runner bean plants come in lots of different colour flowers as well, so that's really quite pretty. You can grow them up a trellis, which is really nice. And we've got a neighbour at the back of us. She's grown them all along the wall. Um, I've grown them before with sunflowers in between, and they seem to grow about the same height as the runner beans, because the runner beans climb up poles. So having sunflowers in between makes it really nice. Squirrels love runner beans and sunflower seeds. I did grow them up some... A wooden fence once and the squirrels used to hop along, eat the runner beans and eat the sunflower seeds at the same time. Very fat squirrels that year. Um, good for the bees. Unfortunately also black fly tend to like runner beans and snails and slugs. But with the slugs and snails, generally when you start off a runner bean plant, if you protect it, that's when it's most vulnerable. So if a slug or a snail will attack a runner bean plant when it's too young, it will destroy the plant. Whilst when they're a bit older, the, the runner beans can cope with it because you, they don't get completely overrun with slugs and snails. But black flies are more of a problem with the older runner bean plants, the ones that are established and have already climbed up to the pole. What I do to manage the black fly is um, get a, a, a recycled squirty um, plastic bottle with a squirty top on it, put some hand soap, you can get the, the one with the squirty top or only bar of soap and have that with warm water inside and if you squirt the runner bean plant with that the um, surfactant in it make, kills the, the black fly. It doesn't completely do it so you might have to use regularly, fairly regularly but only use it, a spot needs it when you need it, don't use any more than you need to because it's Unfortunately with things like that it will kill some of the beneficial insects that you want to keep. So just, you know, be sensible with it and just use it when you need it. And it's never a good idea either to spray any plants when they're in flower because that's when the bees and the insects come to pollinate. So you don't want to put them off for doing that at all. So only spray for black, black fly on the bits that don't have flowers or before they come into flower when then you need the bees to pollinate them. Um, so look, you do need to give them strong supports, as you'll see in the video. Um, lots of people give them really nice strong supports and do a lot better than I've done, but I've, I've done like the best I could. It was unexpected that they tend to be leaning, but that's okay. I don't do perfect. So the runner beans have grown nice and, and steady, so I'm pleased with the result that I've got. I've done some lovely pickled onions in the past, so I've adapted a recipe that I've found um, to use the nice sweet vinegar from the pickled onion recipe to do the pickled runner beans. The jars I've used uh, are Lidl's Freshona roasted red peppers that were in there, and this one, although it's got the wrong lid on it, used to be a jar of chickpeas. They're both around about 540 grams, so I guess about a kilo in, in weight for the, for the glass jars. They're the contents that they hold. The more runner beans that you slice and squish into the jar, the higher up the vinegar will go. So I've, I've used approximately the best in, um, measurements of runner beans that I can for those two jars. So you might have to add a little bit of vinegar or squash a few more beans in to make the vinegar go up higher. 
So don't forget when you reuse jars to wash them thoroughly with hot soapy water and to check the lids for any damage. Inside the lid sometimes you'll get a bit of rust or something. Don't use reuse a jam jar lid that's got that, that in. You can reuse, you reuse the jam jar for something else but if you're going to use um, pickling, things for pickling, you want to have a good quality lid really to keep it in. What happens is when you heat the jars to sterilise them and then you put the runner beans in and then you put the warm or hot vinegar solution or whatever other pickling solution you use in when you pickle things when it cools it sucks the lid down so that's how come you can tell it's sealed it's the it's the heat when it cools down that sucks the lid in which makes that nice seal because that's how come in the shops when you press the lid if it's not pressed down then it isn't sealed properly so that's why it's a very good idea to use the hot vinegar in with the runner beans to create the seal now this is what you'll need you need for me two glass jars with well fitting lids about one and a quarter to one and a half pounds of beans um, that's about three quarters of a kilo I believe and you want one ounce of salt with that a pint of malt vinegar and three ounces of granulated sugar you can adapt it probably depend what you've got in the cupboard but this is what I've used for this recipe and this is how I did it Come with me up to the Malabans. This is the Lean in Tower of Pizza, and I'm going to make pickled runner beans. Usually, you have quite a lot all at once, unfortunately. So, I'm going to pickle some for the winter. My mum used to do pickled runner beans, so I'm going to give it a go. You don't want that are too got too big a seed in. I might take try that. I'll string it and cut it across to see how it is in the middle. and nice and thin. My grandmother showed me how to do this because she used to work for gentry in the early 1900s. And slicing thin green beans apparently was a skill. Right, these are a mixture of runner beans and green beans, mostly green beans. Um, I've topped and tailed them and stringed them. And I've put them in a glass bowl overnight sprinkled with about an ounce of salt and then covered them so how to get all the wet and the juice out of the, out of the beans and um, they're draining now I want them to be as dry as possible before you put them into sterilised jars right. it's got in my oven but that's the two jam jars I'm going to use for the beans and sterilise them in the oven you want about 10 minutes or 6 minutes left on a low setting See, mine's about electric, 100, but you can see that very well, but it's on about 100. And that's to sterilise the jars, you can also chemically sterilise them. I rinse them in nice cold water, and I put them on a tea towel now, a nice clean tea towel, just to make sure I get them as dry as possible. While my jars are sterilising, make sure they're nice and dry before I put them in the jars. It's two steep heat sterilised jars and lids. Jars are hot because they want 100 degrees but they're not too bad. This is why I've pat dry the, the beans, let it as dry as I possibly can. Be careful because the jars will be a bit hot. If 
set up the jars. The beans. Wider neck is easy to get the beans in. But that's what the jars I've had recycled to use. So that's what we've got. I'm hoping there's um, the right amount of beans for the jars. Keep going to their full. And in here I have one pint of malt vinegar and three ounces of caster sugar. I guess you could use um, caster sugar or any sort of sugar really. It's to make a nice sweet vinegar. But that's going to dissolve slowly. And I'm going to keep heating that up for the moment. That's the, that's the vinegar and sugar just brought to the boil that you can see little bubbles in it oh it gives off the most amazing smell oh it makes your taste buds go all funny and your mouth water because it's so nice all right that's the vinegar and sugar just gently brought to the boil that's going to be poured now into my two jars of beans i'm just going to Put the vinegar in a jug, just because it's going to be safer. Otherwise, I'll burn myself, and I'm a bit of a klutz. So I'm going to put, just put the solution in there, which should have been sterilised actually. But I don't suppose the beans will last long before we eat them. So there's two jars, one for my brother and one for me, because when we were small, our mum used to do called runner beans because she had lots and lots of runner beans in the garden and it just reminds us of our childhood we used to have um, plates of runner beans with gravy it was a bit hot and we used to have pickled runner beans and it's a nice childhood memory so that's why there's one jar for my brother and one jar for me if you leave them for about two weeks before you eat them let all the flavours go in it could do with a tiny bit more vinegar in that one but it's the shape of the jar and then we shall eat them. <laughs>